Good morning and welcome to the Sport for Business Daily. We are really delighted this morning to be joined by Judy Glover. She is in charge of marketing with Circle K, who have been on board as partners of Team Ireland for the Olympic Games and the Paralympic Games. You will have noticed as you've uh, traversed the country uh, during the last few months at least, uh, that the Here for Ireland campaign has been out and about, that Irish athletes in terms of the Olympic and Paralympic teams have been really front and centre stage on the four courts. Um, good morning, Judy. You're very welcome to Sport for Business. Morning, Rob. How are you? Thanks for having me today. Absolute pleasure. Tell me something. We should have been deep in Paralympic Games territory at the moment. We spoke at the Sporting Year Ahead event in the Aviva Stadium back in January, and we were filled with anticipation and excitement about what was happening. It didn't. How has that impacted on Circle K's role as a sponsor within uh, both of the Olympic and the Paralympic teams? Yeah, I suppose the, the disappointment is that we couldn't activate all the plans. Um, the Here for Ireland campaign was very much about the athletes and the communities, so meaning physical presence, um, a lot of on-site engagement activity, particularly on the lead up to both Olympic and Paralympic Games. And we just had to pause all that. We had to focus on, you know, the health and safety guidelines, both for athletes and customers and our staff. And as you say, right now, we would have been in heavy activity. You know, we had a lot of uh, how we were going to, you know, bring coverage on the event, how we we're going to celebrate um, the athletes, whether they got to podium or not. Um, we had so many ways to kind of light up our stations and get our staff engaged and communicate, you know, to Ireland, you know, alongside the likes of the, the national news stations. Um, so, yeah, it, look, it's been really disappointing. But if I take the mindset that the athletes have, um, we just need to focus on next year now and really try and engage with the communities or keep that engagement with the communities and the athletes, keep that conduit between them all up until next year. So, like, you know, some of the athletes say, the benefit is they get another year. Um, and we're looking at it that way, certainly. Um, yeah. We've, we've interviewed a number of the, the athletes as, as, as part of your campaigns as well, with Shane and, and Greta uh, from both of the teams. Uh, both of them, uh, you know, really, really good ambassadors for, for themselves, for their families, for their sport, for the brand. The Here for Ireland hashtag campaign has been running through the summer as well. So you've maintained your presence out there. It's not as though you just postponed everything and said, well, we'll, we'll shut this down for 20 and we'll bring it all back in 21. The, 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 you know, stretching it out over that longer period of time, though, is going to be demanding in terms of, of the creative side. How much planning has gone into that as to what you want to release now and what you want to hold back for what would have been the sort of, you know, the keynote areas of your marketing? And so a lot, a lot of planning has gone on. Like back in, in March, we kind of had to stop, not panic, but wait for the news, you know, through the Olympic Federation of Ireland and Paralympics Ireland about what was going to happen. So a lot of uncertainty. Um, we made it a decision as a, as a business that we would stop all the activity because it would, you know, wouldn't get the, the right value either for the athletes or for what we need the sponsorship to do for us from a brand perspective. Um, but then very quickly we had to kind of reset the team and focus on, you know, right, we're anticipating this news. What can we keep going so we can absolutely keep here for Ireland on player park going, the, the, the um, digital coins, so keep that going. And then keep that constant connection with both of the, the government bodies, which we did. Uh, from the likes of the PR and the actual marketing and every single plan that we had in place between March and up to, let's say, July for Olympics and then uh, August for Paralympics, we had to reset the focus to what channels customers were, were actually looking at. And most of it was going to happen through digital. So a lot of our planning went into the digital side of our marketing calendar as such. Um, a lot of brainstorming, a lot of trying to think outside the box. How are we going to engage the, the customers that are being overwhelmed with news of COVID-19, restrictions, lockdown? It's not a great place for some people. Um, and how do we kind of lift their spirits a little bit to, to, to show what we're going to continue to do, albeit, as I say, it's stretched out. So that's not ideal for anybody. And, you know, it's like a limping horse. We're really trying to, you know, get it back to health. Um, but what we did in the middle of it was um, 
we, we supported the frontline workers very early on, you know, by giving them a, a free coffee if they came into the store. And we kind of extended that with the program called Little Thank Yous. So the Little Thank Yous was digital again. And we enlisted Philip Doyle, um, a fellow Team Ireland athlete and also a doctor to uh, endorse that initiative for us. Um, and then what happened was all the athletes got on board with that, so, um, Olympic and Paralympic athletes. Our customers start engaging. We've got a huge amount of uh, PR uh, media coverage out of it, and we got a lot of traction in the store. So Little Thank Yous is a program that's you know, focused on anybody, and not just the frontline service workers, but anybody that dedicated themselves to COVID-19, um, you know, still does. You know, give them something nice. It's a, like it's a gesture. You know, a nice coffee or a drink, and um, help them the right. And Philip really endorsed that. He just got behind it, and I suppose he was in the front line himself. And um, so we were really happy to have them engaged. So that was something that we probably didn't anticipate when we thought about it in March. But coming into the likes of May and June, it just seemed to fit because we did not want to stop the communication that we were able or enabled to do with the athletes and our customers and our staff. Remember, our staff were highly engaged, are highly engaged in this program, and they were looking forward to so much activity, and we just had to kind of switch it up for them. So we're really proud that Philip came on, on board and that our customers really engaged with that program. So that was really nice. And we continued to try and, you know, stretch that out with the likes of the Olympic um, opening ceremony that week and for Paralympics. And what could we do? We were like, God, we had so many different plans in store, um, you know, with athletes, you know, on the lead up to when they might take off on their flight, doing stuff in the airport, you know, all that kind of activity. So we did, like, we didn't just let it pass. We absolutely needed to celebrate um, the week leading up to. Um, so a lot of, uh, like, the marketing team that I have are really creative. They're fantastic, so positive, they've got great mindsets. And came up with like a lead in for the week. And one of the big things out of that was um, Pass the Torch. So I don't know if, if you've seen it, but if you follow us on uh, Instagram, you'll see that we had a number of athletes carry the gold torch. So we made up a gold torch and they kind of fling it across the screen to the next athlete, to next athlete, to management, to staff. And actually it just got a break away from craziness and the fact that the, the event wasn't actually happening. So it just got some great engagement from, from the athletes spinning off into our own business. So we were delighted. And we did the same then. You know, we did a lot of uh, media and PR interviews with Shane. And you know, I know you've met Shane. He's a hugely positive, fantastic ambassador to us um, and just a brilliant athlete. And you know, I wish him so much luck next year. I don't know if he's going to need it because he's so focused. Um, Greta, um, Roisin. Philip, Nicole Turner, Jordan Lee, like so many people have been our ambassador. And, you know, sometimes ambassadors, you know, I d we never wanted them to think of this like as a, a role that they just have to be part of a brand for. We wanted to give them something back. Um, and that's why if we'd switched off the program, let's say when we got the news, um, we would have just broke the chain of getting the community support. We would have broke that... Um, who broke that confidence with the athletes of what, why we were in this sponsorship um, and trying to, to re-engage with everybody and just doesn't make sense. So um, we still have a lot of plans that we have, that we still have in mind, you know, for the next year. And a lot of our coverage right now will be, you know, a year to the games next year. Um, so we, we do need to continue to be creative. Like we, we can't just stop now that we've gotten to the Paralympics piece. Uh, we've quite a lot to, to, to still do, but I suppose that's the beauty of having this extra year, I suppose, that we can continue to be creative. It always works best with the ambassador partnerships when you're thinking as much of what you can do for them as what they can do for you, to paraphrase Kennedy back in, back in the 1960s. But, but that sense really does come through that, you know, in speaking to the athletes, they... They've, they've kind of enjoyed that role. They've enjoyed the ability to actually sort of, you know, drive into the forecourt and get their free cup of coffee. From your point of view, is, is it the amplification that they bring? There's always been that sort of sense that if, you know, if you as a brand tell me I should do something, it's worth 5%. But if my friend or my 
role model tells me I should do something, it's worth 95%. And is that the principal means by which your interest is in, in getting involved in sport because of the, the nature and the profile that the ambassadors can bring to it? Yeah, like I said, this was more than a badging exercise. Some sponsorships don't look at the true meaning of a sponsorship and it's a badging exercise for a brand. Um, so we certainly didn't want the athletes to feel that. Um, so that's why we put that initiative in here for Ireland very early on. We were always going to support the athletes. They have a long journey. Nobody knows, including myself, before we, we came on board with both partners, the sacrifice that the athletes make, the sacrifice that their families make, both in expense, but also time. And they travel our roads. We're in you know, every road network in Ireland. And we're like, how can we really give back to the athletes something that's really valuable to them and their families? And that's where Here for Ireland and the, the, the initiative came from on collecting the digital mm -hmm. currency. But in addition to that, you know, if you look at historical uh, sponsorships, they never really talked about the athletes, never got to know the athletes. Um, and if it is a, a, an Olympic or Paralympic sponsorship, you know, a lot of the athletes were only known when they got to podium. And so that was not our objective. Our objective was get to know these athletes for as long as we we're in the partnership. So right back from the start, our objective was to give a personality or give the voice to the athletes. So we were doing everything from little small snippets um, you could really see the athlete's personality and not just the fact that they're talking about their sporting discipline, but, you know, you heard, you heard Shane and about his family and how passionate he is, you know, with that Irish connection with his, his father being from Ireland. But, you know, even Greta, you know, talking about her passion for Ireland that we probably never would have heard unless next year she gets a medal, potentially. So I suppose we wanted to give something much more and never wanted to be... Um, prescriptive in any of the, the coverage that we needed them to do. We very much wanted them to be them, themselves. Um, and I don't think we would have achieved that if we didn't put something authentic in behind the partnership. Um, you know, and I suppose that was our objective from the start. And I'm glad that, you know, unprovoked that the athletes are talking about that. So not even our ambassadors, right? But we've 148 athletes signed up to this program and they themselves just started to talk about this on Instagram and, you know, all their family members are following and, and then all the other athletes are following and it's kind of spinning. That's nothing that we did. That's actually what the athletes did. And that was maybe the biggest compliment that we got about the fact that our objectives were met in the sponsorship, um, which was not a branding exercise. And it is a very competitive space that you're in. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of forecourts out there. There's a lot of filling stations where we where we stop. And I guess from your point of view, you want to make people like the brand as opposed to need the coffee or yeah. run down to run down to zero one day on their tank. So has has sport answered that call for you over the over the last number of months? Would you would you recommend sport as being a really good environment to get involved in? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like, I mean, when we were looking at sponsorships, we went to every avenue, but the sporting one in particular, this this uh, particular sponsorship, which, you know, we could have gone down rugby or we could have gone down uh, GAA, which are fantastic groups and bodies. But we felt probably we would get uh, a lot of different sporting disciplines in under one umbrella. Um, and that's what we mean by the community piece, where, you know, there's so many different types of customers that come into our stores that support everything. So not just, you know, rugby or GAA. So having um, that particular sporting um, sponsorship has worked really well to our advantage. And one of the other objectives from a brand perspective was we were new to the Irish market. Um, previously we were Topaz and then Circle K. So we'd come out of a really extensive rebrand schedule and nobody knew who we were we were still the same people and you know we still had the same objectives as a business um, and an Irish management team so we really wanted to make sure that the Irish side of Circle K got across the line with the sponsorship and again looking at Team Ireland there was no better way to do that um, so another reason why I think the sporting uh, sponsorship was really key and I know uh, not a lot of Four courts have ever looked at sponsorship within sport, 
Um, but it is certainly uh, something that's worked out very well for us and, and continue. And I have every faith that, you know, it will for, for a long time. Well, you won us over. It's been the, the great imagery, the great ambassadors, uh, the flip and win, albeit we did get really excited when we uh, when we turned up three cars, thinking that we might have won a car and it turned out to be a wash. But little thank yous, that's always good. Um, listen, the best of luck. I know it's going to be a, an exciting year ahead now. We just have to cross fingers, touch toes, everything else to make sure that the Olympics and the Paralympics do go ahead in Japan in 2021. You will be there alongside the athletes as you have been. And uh, and thanks very much. It was, you know, thoughtful analysis of what sponsorship can do and can deliver as well. So uh, we'll be following you over the course of the next year. And I'm no doubt that we'll be back uh, to have a chat again over the course of time. But for the moment, uh, this morning, thank you very much to Judy Glover from Circle K. Thank you, Rob. Thanks, William. Have a great day.